Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn of Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information if you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. In this video, I'm going to be answering questions that I received in the comments of my Dutch oven restoration video, and I'm going to be doing that coming right up. In 2019, I posted a video called Cast Iron Dutch Oven Restoration. And for some reason, that has been my most successful video. Because of its view count, I've had a myriad of comment questions. And today I'm going to do my best to answer them. I'm going to break these questions down into five individual categories. The first category is video production. The first thing that I want to address is all of the comments stating that the Dutch oven in the before picture is not the same Dutch oven in the after picture. The before picture and the after picture is absolutely the same Dutch oven. If you watch the video from start to finish, you'll see that the rusty piece in the beginning transitioned all the way to the finished product. You see it along every step of the way. So there's no place where I was able to substitute a better looking one. I suppose that the skepticism is actually a testament on how you can transform an old rusty piece back into its former glory. I guess I'll take that as a little bit of a compliment. Another group of comments I'll get is the video is too long, it's scratchy, you talk too much, the quality's not very good, and I'll agree, yes, yes, yes. 2019, I was just getting started and still have a lot to learn. I believe today the videos are a lot better, and I believe that next year the videos will be even better than they are today. I'm gonna to try to keep growing. Category number two is stripping. The Dutch oven restoration video was mainly about stripping the old rust and adding new seasoning. Now the vinegar solution will only remove rust and will not remove organics or old seasoning. Now if you want to remove old seasoning, you can use a lye bath or you can use the easy off oven spray method in a bag. So you have vinegar for rust, lye for old organics and seasoning. Now there is a method that is a little more complicated that will remove rust and old seasoning, and that is electrolysis. Now that involves a little more complicated situation altogether, and if you're only gonna do one or two pieces here and there, then you may not wanna go through the trouble of setting up an entire electrolysis tank. Now if you're a collector, and you're gonna be continuously running into pieces that need to be stripped and restored, then I'd say go ahead and move up to electrolysis tank system. But usually, once you remove the old organics and seasoning with a lye bath, you're still gonna have rust to deal with. And those work great hand in hand. The third category is tools and solutions. In the video, I failed to mention what kind of vinegar I was using, or even the strength of vinegar I was using. My preferred vinegar to use is plain white vinegar that you'd find in your grocery store. And it usually is about 5% acidity. Sometimes it's six, usually five. Now you can run across some that's seven and eight or even 10% acidity. Now, if you do that, you may wanna add a little bit more water to reduce that acidity somewhat. So I'm using 5% acidity of white vinegar and I mix it 50% vinegar, 50% water. So I'm diluting that down. So if you have 10% acidity, you may not want to go 50-50. You may want to go 80-20 or 75-25 because you want to make sure that you don't have too much acidity, especially with an old rusty piece because it will also eat into your cast iron itself, not just the rust. So you want to be careful with pieces, especially if they have pitting. The time frame I always stick with is never go over 30 minutes. And if it's still rusty, put it back in for another 15 or 20 minutes, but don't just leave it in there for hours or leave it in there overnight. You may find the next morning that the little pits or the little dimples where the rust has kind of eaten into the surface are way larger than they were to begin with. So you don't want to increase that any more than you have to. One of my other favorite tools is a little palm scrubby. It's just a pot scrubber that you can get in the kitchen section of most uh, big stores. Now this one is nylon or plastic, and you can see I melted it. I think an organic piece of bamboo or some other kind of 
non-plastic will work much better and last a lot longer. So I'm going to be trying some of those out here in the near future. Another tool that I like to use a lot is these little soap pads. Now you can get the brand SOS. This is a great value brand, but you can get the SOS pads and pretty much the same thing as a Brillo pad. SOS, Brillo pad, soap infused, still wool. Now if you're trying to clean a piece of cast iron with seasoning on it, these will little by little strip away your seasoning. So if you have seasoning that needs to be repaired, uh, you can use these to kind of work away the little rough parts of it and then re-season on top and you'll be fine. You're not supposed to use soap on cast iron, right? Well, you can if you want to. Usually I want to, especially if the cast iron gets a little gunky and gets a little tacky. You know, I want to keep my cast iron clean. Now, most of the time, if I'm cooking something like cornbread or something that doesn't really build up a lot of gunk, I'll just wipe that thing out really well with a paper towel and I'm good to go. Now, if I'm cooking a steak and I leave a little residue, I want to get rid of that residue. I may use a little palm scrubby and uh, sometimes I'll use this tool. It's a little chain mail scrubber. This here used to have a scrubber inside it, but you can just get the chain mail fabric. And these little rings are all rounded. There's no sharp edges at all. And that works really good to get some of the hard crusty gunk off and uh, doesn't damage your cast iron. You can use dish soap, rinse it off well, dry it well, and you're good to go. Another tool that I use that a lot of people don't like to use, and that is plain paper towels. Now they do leave a lint residue, but even when you're seasoning, if you do happen to use a paper towel and you do get lint on your cast iron, it's going to burn away and disappear. Now there are some people that believe that the little bitty bits of paper will add carbon to the seasoning layer and make it stronger. Now, I don't know about that. That's pure speculation. Maybe there's a scientist out there to say there's some truth to that. But I never worry about the little bits of paper. They burn away and disappear. Now, on that note, I prefer to use t-shirt material, something like this, 100% cotton. I'll take an old t-shirt that has been wore out and has got holes and got thin and been torn, I'll just rip that thing apart and I'll use the 100% cotton t-shirt material. That is my favorite. But uh, you can use paper towels. It's not going to hurt anything and they are disposable. It's whatever you prefer. Now the fourth category is seasoning. Now I personally like to use Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. It's a product that I personally developed and I think it works great. But I will say this, my favorite standalone oil just oil by itself is going to be grapeseed oil. It has a nice high smoke point. With grapeseed oil, you have 420 degrees. So if you go to 430, 40, 50 degrees, or even 480, you're going to get better results because you're going above the smoke point. The oil has a chance to polymerize and become hard on your cast iron. Now the steps to season your cast iron is first of all you want to start with clean ready to season cast iron and let it get to about 200 or 250 degrees. Go ahead and add your oil over the entire surface. Wipe away all of the excess that you possibly can. The number one rule for seasoning cast iron is less is best. You want the thinnest layer you can possibly get. Now if you wipe away everything you possibly can with a paper towel or t-shirt material or whatever material you're using, there's still going to be a super thin residue layer and that's what you want. That will give you the best seasoning layer you possibly can. And that also answers the question, do I put the pieces in upside down? Do you put them in there right side up? It really doesn't matter if you have eliminated all of the excess because you're not going to have any pooling. You're not going to have any dripping. Now, if you have too much oil, you're going to have dripping, you're going to have pooling, you're going to have uneven seasoning, you're going to have gunky, sticky, splotchy seasoning. So remember, less is best. After you get the seasoning wiped down and get all the excess, you raise the temperature of your oven to about 480 degrees is my preferred. You can even go 500 if you want to. You'll get a little bit 
better seasoning, I believe, especially with grapeseed oil. Leave it in there for about 30 minutes to an hour. Cut your oven off, let it cool down naturally and slowly by itself. And then once it gets cool enough to handle with oven mitts, you can start the process again. Add another layer, wipe away the excess, bring the temperature back up. Depending on the results you're looking for, you may have to add two or three rounds, maybe three or four. I personally like to go about three rounds and then start using the piece. Some people like to go six and seven and eight rounds because they love the nice, pretty, black, shiny cast iron. Occasionally you will get a bronzy color. The more you run through the process, the darker and shinier it will get. It just depends on what your personal desired effects are. Category number five is maintenance. I failed to talk about how you would continue to maintain a piece. A lot of people say, cast iron is just so much trouble. I beg to differ. Cast iron is so easy. It's long lasting and it's also a joy to cook in. Not to mention the quality of cooking that you can do with good, well seasoned cast iron. Especially the antique or vintage variety. So once you clean a piece up after you've uh, used it, you know, if you want to, you can go ahead and add another layer of oil and wipe away all the excess and then store it for the next time you use it. That will be fine. Now, if you notice a little thinness or you think you need some touch up, go ahead and wipe everything down. Give it a, a good coating with your seasoning oil. Wipe away all of the excess. And if you want to, you can stick it back in the oven for another round of seasoning just to give it a touch up. Most of the time that is not necessary. Now you can also do a quick stovetop seasoning on your surface or even the whole thing as far as that's concerned. But if you just want to add a little bit more structure to the cooking surface, you can go ahead and add a little bit of oil to your cooking surface and wipe away all of the excess that you possibly can. Put it on your stovetop, cut your eye on, let it heat up until it starts to smoke. And when it does, cut it off. Just let it cool down naturally and you've already added another layer of seasoning on your cooking surface. So I hope that you found this video to be helpful. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I promise I'll keep more coming. I also want to thank everyone that's purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. The purchase of this product helps keep this channel going, and I just want to say thank you so very much. We're also planning on being at the 2023 National Cornbread Convention this year. And that's going to be on April 29th and 30th. Drop by the Cast Iron Cookware Easy Beasy booth and say hi. We'd love to see you there. And I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I would like to share something with you really quickly. In Psalms chapter 51, verse 10 through 12, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. I just want to say, share the word and be a blessing.